Welcome back everybody. In today's tutorial, you are gonna learn how to do some simple debugging in those pesky dimensional mismatch problems in reinforcement and deep learning. Let's get started. But first, if you're new to the channel, I am Dr. Phil Tabor. In 2012, I got my PhD in condensed matter physics and went to work for Intel Corporation as a back-end dry edge process engineer. I left in 2015 to pursue my own interests, including, but not limited to, deep learning, reinforcement learning, and artificial intelligence. Enough about me, let's get started with the project. So, a little bit of backstory. Uh, this was a lingering issue on my GitHub for quite some time, and I never had the issue because I was dealing with a an earlier version of PyTorch. This turns out to be a version mismatch issue. Uh, and the person that opened the issue did not actually indicate their version of PyTorch or any other software they were using. So it was a little bit hard to debug. So I kind of, you know, said whatever it works for me. And obviously the vast majority of people using the code because it, it's only one, you know, handful of people reporting the issue. So on I went. That is until I was attempting to install the Manim Live to handle some more advanced animations content for you guys. And I totally and horribly borked my Python installation. I couldn't even use it from the command line. And so I had to totally delete Anaconda and start over from fresh. That's always the danger of using Linux. It gives you just enough rope to hang yourself. And of course, as fate would have it, when I ran this code again to test my Python installation to make sure it worked. Lo and behold, I had this exact same issue. So what's the issue? So the issue is that the shape of the mask uh, 64, that is the batch size for the deep Q learning algorithm at index zero does not match the shape of the index tensor 64 by four at index one. So that barfs out on, uh, in my code line 98 or something like that, they have a little bit more for both stuff. So line 125 for them. And it says, have you encountered this type of problem at the time? No, I had not. But since I was encountering it now, I had to actually go ahead and debug it. So let's kind of work through my process for debugging it so you can see how to do this for yourself in the future. But first, a word from our sponsor. So this course is sponsored by my new course, Deep Q Learning from Paper to Code, where I will show you a repeatable framework for turning deep reinforcement learning papers into Pythonic code. It's on sale right now for $9.99, which given its 4.6 star rating and 416 satisfied students is a bit of a steal. You stealing from me, that is. Go ahead and hit the link in the description and I'll see you on the inside. So here we are in the terminal. Uh, let's start off by verifying which version of PyTorch I'm using by just doing pip list and grepping. So you can see I'm using PyTorch 1.4.0. So let's go ahead and run the main file associated with this simple DQN torch file. So we'll say Python main torch DQN uh, lunarlander.py. And so this should crap out fairly quickly. So it says, yeah, um, it gives me the same error shape of the mask at uh, 64 at index zero does not match the shape of the index tensor 64 by four at index one. Okay, so now let me just go ahead and show you that this issue disappears with PyTorch version 1.1. So we'll say pip uh, install torch equals 1.0.0 and that'll take a second. But once it is done, we can go ahead and run this again and see what we get. And lo and behold, we get functional code. So this was the state prior to me uh, borking my Python install. Uh, and so I didn't really see the issue and didn't give it a whole lot of attention because I got a lot of other stuff to deal with. So let's go ahead and clear that. So, uh, but first let's go ahead and uh, reinstall 1.4.0 so we can deal with the problem head on. Okay, so uh, step one of my problem solving process is do a sanity check. So let's think about the problem a little bit. Uh, what we have is an array of experiences uh, that we feed into a deep Q network that will compute the action values for each of those uh, experiences. So we should end up with an array or a matrix or something that is shaped, say, batch size by number of actions. For the lunar lander, we have four actions. And for this particular example, we're using a batch size of 64. So we should end up with something of shape 64 by four. And then we want to find the action the agent actually took and select that zero, one, two, or three action for each 
uh, element of the batch. So for row zero, we want to select action, say three. Row one, we want to select action two, and so on and so forth, all the way for the 64 elements of our batch. And so we should get something that has shape 64 by you know an integer, by a scalar. So just 64 numbers or batch size numbers. Okay, so that all seems well and good. And so I'm using two different arrays to do the indexing. Now, the first thing to check here is, did Phil do something stupid? Now, you saw that it works in version 1.0.0, .0, but let's suppose you, you know, just came in at 1.1.0 or something, and they've already changed how things work, and it does not work. And you don't know, hey, maybe Phil did something on the sly. You don't know. So let's take a look at the... Uh, documentation for NumPy because Torch uses the same indexing rules as NumPy to make sure that using two arrays that are effectively lists, you know, just list arrays, uh, one dimensional arrays, as indices of a matrix will actually generate what we want. So step one is to double check to make sure that you are saying that you're doing what you think you are doing. So here we want integer array indexing under the advanced indexing header in NumPy because again, Torch uses NumPy's rules. And so you can see for X being some array, you can see it, sorry, it doesn't highlight very well. Uh, X equal NP array, one, two, three, four, five, six. So three rows, two columns. You wanna take the subarrays of uh, zero, one, two, comma, next list, zero, one, zero. So what that gives is one, four, and five. Why does it give you one, four, and five? It's because it pairs up the two elements here. So zero, zero gives you one. Uh, row one, column one gives you uh, four. And row two, column zero gives you the five. Okay, so using two, uh, two lists as uh, indices for a matrix does seem to work. So we're doing something that at least makes sense. And so there must be something else going on. So step one, sanity check has passed. We think we know what we're doing. Step two uh, is to say, okay, so some sub part of that is breaking, right? So I'm taking X sub A comma B, where A and B are two separate lists. And so something funny must be going on with those two lists, one or both, let's say. So we have to debug which one. And the easiest way to do that is to strip out all the complexity of the program we're trying to actually debug and just do a very, very simple base program. So let's go back to the terminal and build out a simple model of the problem we're facing. Okay, so let's go ahead and bring up an interactive Python session and we'll say import torch as t and numpy as np. So we're gonna use a reduced batch size. It doesn't make any sense to use a batch size of 64. So let's say a batch size of eight with, we'll say four elements. So we want a matrix of size eight by four and the numbers don't really matter. So we'll just say a very poor, uh, you know, variable naming, but we're just doing a test. So t.randn shape eight by four. So we have eight batch elements and four actions. So then if we go ahead and see what we have, we have a tensor with eight rows, four columns, and it's got some ran uh, randomly generated, normally distributed numbers. Perfect, precisely what we want. So let's go ahead and say, uh, let's verify that we can do array indexing the same way that we do it in NumPy. So we'll say a, uh, sub, we need two lists here. So let's say zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We'll take all the rows and let's just take the zeroth element. So that's seven. Shape mismatch uh, eight by seven. I obviously forgot something. I must have forgotten a zero. There we go. So that gives us indeed the zeroth element of every row. You can verify, you know, 0.877 right here, 455, 455, so on and so forth. So we have verified with our simple model that in PyTorch version 1.4.0, we can indeed do array indexing the same way we do it in NumPy. Okay, so we've isolated that, we've ruled that out. Now we know that there must be some issue uh, going from this representation to whatever it is that we have in the main program. So let's go ahead and uh, kind of think this through. So let's exit this and uh, clear just to make things lovely. And we will say vim simple dqn torch. Let's go down and see what we're dealing with here. And so it's in the learn file. And the line that barfs on my install is 
right here. So this is where it gives me the dimensional mismatch. Um, and it is in particular this little chunk right here. So there must be something wrong with either batch index or action indices. So uh, one possibility is that perhaps we are not, you know, maybe the shape of uh, the batch index or the shape of action indices is wrong. So we can go ahead and isolate that. That's a very simple thing to do. We'll just say batch index dot shape. These are NumPy arrays, so we can uh, take a shape and you can say uh, uh, action indices dot shape. Then we can go ahead and run the program, Python main, um, torch, DQN, lunar lander, and we should get something that makes sense right before it errors out, and we do. So we get two arrays of shape 64 by uh, comma and 64 comma. So we have two lists effectively. And that's precisely what we want. So we know this seems to work okay. So we didn't do something like suddenly end up with something of shape 64 by two or something like that. Okay, very good. Let's clear again and bring up our interactive Python session. And once again, import torch and uh, numpy is np okay so let's go ahead and make our random array again t.randn 8 by 4 okay um, so one thing to note and <laughs> here let me do this let me open up another window and say uh, vim uh, simple dqn torch other thing to note that I didn't note a second ago is the data types. So here we have np int 32 and for action indices, uh, uint 8. If you can see that, uint 8 here and whoops, and uh, um, int 32 there. Okay, so we have an int 32 and an int uint 8, unsigned integer 8. Okay, so. Let's go ahead and quit and come back to our other prompt here and see what we can come up with. So we'll say uh, the batch index is just an MPA range. So we'll say B equals MPA range uh, 8, D type equal MP int 32. And then we'll say uh, A sub B comma. Now we need another list, uh, but first let's print A so we can see what we're looking at. Say A sub B sub, take another list, just the zeroth elements again. Three. eight there we go so now we should again get the eight elements from the uh, leftmost column and indeed we do okay so we've isolated the problem further so now we know that the problem doesn't lie in our npa range statement so let's uh, go ahead and say c equals np array and we'll just pick some values we can say the zeroth elements two three Four, five, six, seven, eight. You type equal MP U int eight. Do I have everything I need? So then we can say A sub B and C. Ah, so now we get the same error. So now it says the shape of the mask eight, which is our batch size corresponding to 64 in the issue with GitHub, does not match the shape of the index tensor eight by four at index one. So we have now discovered the source of the problem. So what is going on here? So we have already verified that we can do array indexing in this way, uh, but we do have a clue. And uh, you know, this is something that perhaps could have uh, served as a clue to us, but not to the person in the GitHub issue because uh, they didn't get this deprecation warning. Uh, so. Now, in hindsight, with version 1.4.0, it's obvious what happened. Uh, the NPUint 8 screwed it up. Okay, now let's talk about the reason we're using NPUint 8. The reason uh, at the time that I did it, uh, given that it worked at the time, it didn't break anything. But the reason for doing so is because the actions are going to be small integers. In the case of, say, the lunar lander is just 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay, 0, 1, 2, and 3, so very, very small numbers. You don't need all the way up to a 64-bit uh, integer number, right? That would just take up too much memory. There's no reason to use it. And so, moreover, the numbers are positive definite, or just positive, excuse me. So we know that it can be 0, 1, 2, or 3, so why not use an unsigned 8-bit integer 
which would give you zero to 255, right? The smallest possible thing to use up the least amount of memory. That's the C programmer in me trying to be, you know, quite efficient, quite effective while getting the problem done. But of course it comes back to bite me in the rear end. So here we have an issue. Uh, we've discovered that it's NPU and eight is the issue. And of course it's a versioning thing. Uh, PyTorch used to let it ride way back in the day. But the suggestion here, please use the dtype torch.bool instead is bunk. We don't want to use bool because we don't want zero one. We want zero one, two, three or any other integer for that matter. And so what do we do? So our strategy then should be to just change this to an int 32. And then we can verify A sub B sub C, and lo and behold, we get the correct behavior. Okay, so problem solved. Okay, very, very cool. Problem solved, finally. Now, uh, let's just recap the steps we took. So the first thing we did was uh, to do a uh, basic sanity check to make sure that what we could do, uh, what we wanted to do could be done, right? Uh, second thing we did was verify the shape of the tensors, right, to make sure we didn't misshape something, nothing stupid going on. Then we stripped out all the complexity. We don't need the deep neural network. What we're really dealing with is a matrix mismatch, uh, dimensional mismatch issue. So we just go to the terminal. We create some very simple matrices of a size that is manageable to print out and see what is going on. Uh, and then we construct step by step a toy model of what is actually going on. We say, okay, uh, we're taking, you know, uh, a torch tensor. We verify that it can be used in the same way as a NumPy tensor. Okay, we've figured out that that isn't the issue. There isn't some problem with that. Then we use two other smaller arrays to say, okay, uh, which array that we're using actually breaks it. So before we declare victory, uh, just one more thing I suppose is prudent to do is to go to the program and actually... Uh, make that change and verify that it works. So change this line to int 32. And uh, do I have a print statement down here? I do. Let's go ahead and get rid of these. Right quit and come back here and run our program and verify that it works again. Perfect, now it works, okay. So let's just go ahead and stop that. We don't need to let it run. Uh, I hope that was helpful. So basic idea is sanity check to make sure everything you think you're doing correctly is correct. Uh, look at documents to make sure that double sure that what you're doing is correct. Uh, and then build a toy model of what you're dealing with in the interactive Python session to strip out all of the unnecessary complexity because none of the other stuff, the neural networks don't matter. We're just dealing with a simple matrix dimensional mismatch issue. Very, very straightforward to fix if you spend a few minutes thinking the problem through. Now, of course, this is something where, you know, I have the benefit of a couple decades of programming. I've been programming since I was 12 years old, so, you know, 25 years. Uh, a little bit of uh, intuition you gain with that type of experience, but uh, something anybody, even a beginner, can replicate by following this simple process. Sanity check, read the docs to make sure you didn't do something stupid, uh, strip out all the complexity, build a toy model, and test your toy model. And this process is robust. I use it all of the time, uh, sometimes with even more complex issues. Now, there are other types of errors that uh, are more insidious, and those are logic bugs. So suppose that suddenly the problem didn't work at all. Maybe it didn't learn, uh, you know, and it could be an issue with learning rates, could be an issue with uh, matrix, uh, sorry, the uh, number of hidden layers. Maybe you just don't have enough layers to describe the problem, or it could be a total, you know, logic bug in your program. But that's a whole separate video on debugging logical issues. If you'd like to see a video on how to debug logic errors in computer software, leave a comment down below. If you found this helpful, make sure to give it a like, a share, and a subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you don't miss my next video. And I'll see you in that next video.